All right, we're going to talk about ring gap. So these rings are from Mali um, for the Volkswagen 1.8 turbo engine. And I've started gapping the, uh, the top row. So the way I have this set up is actually the, these are the numbers of the pistons. This is the top ring, the middle ring, and the bottom ring. And then I have the gap for each one just written down there so I remember what it is. Uh, depending on your application, gaps might be a little different. Um, when you run boost and a lot of boost, you have a larger gap. So what happens is when the, the engine is running, right, the, the, everything heats up, the piston rings are going to heat up and they're going to expand. Um, the bore doesn't expand that much, so the rings, as they heat up, they're gonna, uh, the ends will come close together. If those ends touch and push against each other, it's gonna cause the piston ring to bind up. It's gonna start scratching your cylinder wall. It's gonna cause the piston ring to break. Once your piston ring breaks, you're not gonna hold compression. So getting this gap right is, is pretty important. So here we have the, the block on the stand. So I'm gonna show you how I um, put a ring into the bore and then how I measure the gap. I'm gonna be using a, a feeler gauge set. So right now the feeler gauge that is extended is my 22 thousandths feeler gauge. And then I'm also gonna be using, this is a piston ring gap filer. It's a little grinding wheel on a hand crank. And then I'm also gonna use a honing stone to clean up the, uh, the edge of the, the ring once I, once I filed it. To put in a piston ring, I start by just um, uh, squeezing it in a little bit to get it started into the bore. And then I'm going to use a piston to push it down in the bore. I'm going to hold the piston upside down so it's pushing it. And this way, this keeps it straight. It keeps it perpendicular to the, to the bore. And it allows me to kind of just be consistent and push it about an inch or so. That's about an inch and a half down so that the ring is partway about in the middle of the stroke of the piston. That's where the cylinder walls get the most wear. Um, so that's where you want to check, check your ring to. Take the piston out. I can take my feeler gauge and slide it into the gap. And this one I've already uh, done, so my 22 thousandths feeler gauge just slides through really nice. And for a comparison, here is the, the next ring. And uh, these rings have printing on them here. I don't know if the camera's picking this up, but there's some numbers printed on there. Those numbers are on the top side of the ring. Sometimes there's actually the word top. Sometimes there's a little dot. Um, but rings do have a top and a bottom, so you have to be aware of that. So if I get this ring started into the bore, push it down with my piston, go in there with my feeler gauge, and it doesn't go. I don't know if the camera's catching this, but um, I, like, I can't slide it in. And the camera might even be able to tell that, you know, just visibly this gap is larger than this one. So this one needs a little bit of filing. And now when I remove a ring, I usually from the gap side, pull that, pull that up so it pivots, and then I squeeze the gap together, and then I can lift it out of the bore. So to file the ring, I'm gonna hold the ring on the filer. It's got this little ledge to hold the back side of the ring, and I'm gonna squeeze the two sides of the gap together against the wheel and against the stops here. And then as I turn the crank, it's going to file both sides of the ring and keep the filing, filed cuts straight and square. So a few cranks of that. Um, this disc is getting a little worn down, so it probably takes a few more cranks than a brand new one. Start taking only a little bit of material off because you can't put it back on after you take it off. If you don't have one of these ring filers, you could use just a hand file. This is a relatively small file and just try to be very straight and you know push it push it like that as you go inward and try to do both sides evenly and again you know keep that gap straight so that when it goes together that gap is uh, is touching because when it expands that's what it's going to do. You don't want that to be a you want to close up tight. You don't want there to be a V in there. Once you filed it you're going to feel a little bit of a rough edge on the, the freshly cut metal. So I'm using a honing stone. And with a honing stone, 
I'm able to kind of break that edge off and make sure that it's it's perfectly smooth. So if I'm, I can run my finger over it, I don't feel that little, I don't feel it catch on that sharp edge anymore. So you have to do that to all the edges. And then there's usually a little bit of stone dust and metal dust. I take a paper towel or a rag and make sure that it's clean and that there's no extra particles there before I put it back in the board to measure it, the feeler gauge. All right, I'm ready to put this ring back in and measure it again. I'm happy with that. Yep, my 22 thousands just slides through. Another thing that's important to check tolerance-wise with your pistons is the, the, the distance gap here for the ring. So there's a spec for these rings. It's, uh, it's four thousandths of an inch, one-tenth of a millimeter. So if I take uh, one of the rings, so the top ring, if I put it in the, the top groove, you can feel it has a little bit of side-to-side -side play. And then I can use my feeler gauge to try to slide a feeler gauge in along the side. So the 4,000th one, the maximum spec, doesn't fit through. Uh, let's try the 3,000th. The 3,000th one doesn't really fit through either. I have a two and a half thousandths one. Let's try that two and a half thousandths. And that one, even that's pretty tight. So let's try two thousandths. Two thousandths of an inch, two thousandths of an inch slides right in. So it's somewhere between two thousandths and two and a half thousandths. So that's perfectly within spec for these rings. Um, the you can the the second ring is a little thicker than the than the top ring, the middle ring. So it uh you know you would do that in in its groove as well and measure that. And again, I can tell by the by the kind of side by side movement it has, it's gonna be about the same as that top one. The last thing I wanna say about piston rings is how important it is to use a piston ring plier or installation tool. I have uh you can kind of by hand stretch a piston ring around onto the piston. I have in the past broken piston rings that way. And then you're inconvenienced, you have to order a new ring or sometimes a whole new set. So uh, using the pliers is really the best thing. The two jaws of the plier are little kind of um, angled V pockets to grab the, the edges of the ring. And it flexes the ring outward just enough so that you can slide it over the piston into the groove and then release it. And actually when you put the rings on you start with the third one and you work your way up. That's the easy way to do it. Um, and then to remove it I just put my thumb or my finger on the back side of the ring to make sure that it pushes the, 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 the gap of the ring outward, the two ends of the ring outward. And then I can use the pliers to, to grab the ends of the ring, flex it out, and then slide it off the piston.